I'm back. I'm back. What we're gonna do is make a new solid. So just right click this box, press new, and then solid. And we're actually gonna make this white because white is very minimalistic. And then what we're gonna do is import our screenshot. This is gonna be a PNG for you guys, but I haven't made it a PNG. So I'm just gonna mask it with the rounded rectangle tool. Simply do this. Also import our color picker. It doesn't look exactly like apples, but like what we're gonna do is search for fill. And then we're gonna add that on top of our layer like color picker thing and then we're gonna choose the blue color and then guys after that what we're gonna do is kind of like move this around we're gonna put this right here and then we're gonna press s on our keyboard and we're just gonna scale it down and yeah boom what we're gonna do is start animating actually press p on our layer we're gonna press the stopwatch and we're actually going to position this like up here for the start and then we're gonna go forward a few frames and we're actually going to move it to this box you can't really see it but like you'll be able to see it in a second right click the box again press new and then no object we're just gonna change this color because yeah we don't want to get confused press this hold shift click our second layer and then we're gonna simply drag it to the null and then if we position no layer to like move up some we can see it better and then we can also fix this positioning if we play this back it obviously moves like that but we're gonna press s first we're gonna change the scale just a little bit stopwatch press u this is gonna move this over here and then we're gonna scale this down because it's too big and then we're gonna go to the beginning of our clip and i kind of want to make it bigger so we're just gonna like scale it up just a little bit i'm gonna move these keyframes as well we're gonna highlight all of our keyframes press y and then we're gonna do a little speed graph if it's not on speed graph just click that speed graph and then we're just gonna do something like this you just have to highlight this like corner and then drag it highlight drag and then once we play it back it should be smoother and then we can turn on motion blur of course it should be smooth motion blurry for the no we're gonna press position again so stopwatch and we're gonna move this keyframe over here and we're gonna start it off by having the frame like this the part where there's the most motion blur it's very hard to explain but the part where there's like the most motion blur or where it like moves we're gonna easy ease this and then we're gonna copy the same graph as the other one essentially and we're gonna do this bloop and then once we play it back it should look something like that and i'm gonna move the color picker like up some because i want it to be kind of centered so I'm just gonna move but after that what we're gonna do is import our photo Biba doobie photo position it over this like square put it right here and then we're gonna scale it down to kind of like fit in there just try to get it around that area and then press scale and then we're gonna press R we're gonna do all these keyframes position keyframe scale keyframe rotation all of that press u and then we're going to link it to the null as well and then what we're going to do is go forward a few frames and then we're going to go to fit we're going to scale this up and position it like right here position outwards too. bring this down the y rotation to be like that we're going to just highlight over all of them easy ease f9 select do that boom do that boom and then turn on motion blur obviously and then once we play this back it should move outwards like this all right and then it should look something like that now for us video editors i feel like we're always trying to get better that's why you're watching this video right there's always something new to learn or a skill to sharpen and honestly finding good stuff online can be a total pain in the butt and that's why i got to tell you about skillshare skillshare skill <laughs> It's seriously like been a game changer for me. Getting started was like really easy. And I mean like really, really easy. And all you have to do is like choose what type of things you like, what type of things you're interested in. Skillshare gives you everything that you need. Whether you're trying to figure out a new software or make your edits flow even better or even get into color grading, there's a class for it. But the cool thing is it's not just for video editors. If you're into design or photography or even curious about, I don't know, hand lettering or something, they have classes on that too. It's like a giant creative playground you can learn whatever you want whenever you want so if you're looking to learn something new or just jump up your game in like editing or photography or art skillshare is definitely worth checking out and first thing we're gonna do is obviously import our image we're gonna be using the apple keyboard <laughs> the pngs are linked in the description below scale this down layer 
new solid and then drag the solid underneath and as far as the font i'm using the font nexa you can do any font but i'm doing something similar to apple's font so our instagram handle is rad vxz and we're just gonna keep duplicating it until you finish spelling it out Control d Enter a Control d d Control d v Control d x Control d z you're gonna click the first layer for your text and then you're just gonna drag it on out here press the r drag it out here press the a drag it out over here d drag it over here v drag it x drag it and then z you can drag it you can place this however you want you can just simply do something like this and move on more exact all right so now that you have it somewhat placed where you want it to be now we're going to change the rotation of press the letters r, and then we're going to just change the rotation kind of like that go to the r rotate do this a r rotate it d r rotate it and also move it just a little bit d r rotate x r rotate and then z r and rotate as far as keyframing what you're going to do first is click the first thing that you want to change i'm just going to do the first like little letter or symbol press p the stopwatch and then we're also going to press r stopwatch and then we're going to press u on our keyboard and we're going to select both of these keyframes and move them out because we want this to be our like last keyframe and then we're going to change the position to move upwards so we're going to go down and then we're going to change the rotation to something like that and then you're going to easy ease all these keyframes, press Y or whatever. And then you're going to do a keyframe like this. And you're just going to make a little speed graph. Yeah. And then you're going to do the same thing for all the other layers. Just go to the beginning. And then as you can see, the letters are like on top of the keyboard, but we kind of want it to pop behind. So... We're just gonna pop this bad boy on top of all the layers. And then after that, what we're gonna do is import our cursor. All right, so once you've done the little cursor, I'm just gonna turn on motion blur really quick, add a new null layer. So layer, new, null object. And then I'm gonna change the color of this really quick to blue. Attach everything to the null layer. Besides the white solid, we're gonna drag everything else to the null layer and connect it. And then after that, what we're gonna do is make everything 3D. Click the top layer, hold shift, click the bottom layer, and then press the 3D. I kinda wanna like do something like this. And then if I want, I can also add like a gradient to the text. You can either use the four color gradient or you can do sapphire, but I think four color gradient works pretty well so change like the blend mode or whatever and then I can move these around obviously and then I can copy it so command C and then copy it to all the other layers but I can change the colors as well all right and this is the final product I don't know what the symbol is called but it's cool and what we're gonna do is basically replicate this so what we're gonna have to do is make a new solid and then put it under the Apple thing eyedropper tool and select the green color right here and then we're gonna make a new mask we're gonna turn off this layer with the eyeball tool and then we're just gonna mask it we're just gonna do something like this it doesn't have to be too perfect but like make sure it's not like too janky and we're just simply going over it like this all right once you finish masking you can turn it back on it should be like similar to the other thing and then after we do that what we're gonna do is add another solid i know there's a lot of solids guys this one's gonna be white again but this time we can use the circular tool ellipse tool and then hold shift so it's like a perfect circle and we can actually delete the apple thing i know my edges aren't perfect like they're kind of ugly you can spend more time on them yeah so what we're gonna do is go to the beginning of our timeline make sure your white circle is selected press p select the stopwatch go forward a few frames move it to the left like this and then we're gonna highlight over them press y and then we're gonna do a little speed graph and then once we play it back it should move as you can see it like slowly fades into that color so what we're gonna do is duplicate it and then we're gonna change the solid color a grayish color i guess it should be something like that and then what we're gonna do is press t and then we're gonna go to the end of our keyframe press the stopwatch for opacity go to the beginning and then change it to zero and then once we play it back it should transition like that just import our photo 
and then we're gonna scale this down obviously because it's too big and then we're gonna import the next one this one and then we're gonna scale it down and then guys what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mask over these pictures so ellipse tool make it a circle hold shift if you have to let's put this layer on top of the other picture and then we may have to scale it down just a little bit because you know it's it's not on there the best hold on and then and then we're gonna press p and then we're gonna position this to the right of the other picture let's make a new null layer attach these two photos to the null and then we're just gonna do that and then we're gonna press p on our keyboard make sure you're at the beginning of the timeline press the stopwatch go towards the end and then simply drag it like this we're gonna try to match this graph so select it press y easy easy it. we're gonna match the graph with the other thing turn on motion blur for the pictures it should do something like that after that what you can do is pre-compose the no layer in the two pictures right click one of them and then pre-compose to make a mask do a mask like this make sure you hold shift to make it like a perfect circle click the selection tool and move the mask however you need to and then once you play it back it should look something like that and then we have our little picture slide scale this down and then after that what we're gonna do is import our picture so our Biba Doopy picture and then we're just gonna slide that on there and then we're gonna scale it down what we're gonna do is replicate the face ID shape so now we're gonna change the tr um, opacity so press T make it lower and like make it just enough to like see the edges and stuff so we're gonna scale it down just a little bit more and then what we're gonna have to do is trace it so it doesn't have to be perfect but and then to bring up the pen tool just press G and to move it around with the hand tool press h all right and then once you do this what we're going to do is change the transparency so press t then we're going to change the opacity back to 100 and then it should be the shape of the face id let's make a new null layer layer new null make all these layers 3d except for the solid layer and then we're going to connect these two images to the null layer and then we're gonna press R and we're gonna change Y rotation. Click our Biba Doobie layer, press T, and then we're gonna change the opacity to zero. Go like halfway into the transition or timeline, press the stopwatch, and then we're gonna go one frame forward. So in this corner, there's gonna be a preview button and you could just click this once, which is next frame, and then change it to 100. Let's go back to our no layer, and then we're gonna click Y rotation. We're gonna go forward past these two keyframes, rotate it. 180 degrees now what we're gonna do is go to the middle of these keyframes highlight easy ease them and then we're just gonna do the keyframe like this and now as you can see it rotates for the last part of the transition we're gonna add the little like circles we're gonna make a new solid and it doesn't matter what color because we're gonna add something to it so put it above the white solid to make it a circular hold shift we're gonna center the anchor point right click the solid and then we're gonna press transform and then center anchor point and layer content we're gonna go back to the solid and then we're gonna and then what we're gonna do is add the four color gradient on here again I'm just gonna stick with like reddish colors for now go to the beginning of the timeline oh this is not centered make sure the circle is centered in here click zero click the stopwatch go forward a few frames then make sure the circle fills in everything in here where it flips so like right here easy ease these and then do a speed graph to match where it flips and then we should get something like this to add those like extra layers or whatever to it what we're gonna do is duplicate this layer and then we're gonna change the gradient of it i'm gonna do like a darker red i guess and just like switch up the colors move this a few frames back but all you have to do is like keep adding more and more layers and then it should give you the effect <laughs> Number five, we have this like rotating, I don't know what the heck this is called. Import our little like text message effect. This is not what we wanted to say guys, like we need to change that. So add a new solid, layer new solid, and then we're gonna select this gray color and then we're gonna press okay. And then we're gonna do is press T, change the opacity just so you can like see it just a little bit. And then we're gonna make a mask over our text and then we're just gonna do something like this do that then change the opacity to 100 again and then it should like disappear and that's what we want so then we're gonna add new text and we're just gonna add our name jdenfx and then we're just gonna put it in the area where it would be and then it should look like that 
and then we're gonna do the same thing but for this bottom part so we're gonna duplicate this mask and then we're just gonna like move it and then change the shape to cover it and then we're gonna add new text again and then we're just gonna like change the font if we want all right this should work um this is not too perfect obviously but if you really like put time into like making this look pretty it'll look super good last thing we need to do for this template is add like the little app because it's missing and then we're gonna like put it in the spot where the message should be and then yeah we did our text message so and then what we're gonna do is pre-compose everything that you made with this and now we're gonna use this color picker wheel thing we're just gonna duplicate this a whole bunch of times and then we're just gonna move it in random spots right here right here right here and we're gonna change the scale for some of them make some of them smaller and then after that we can obviously make all of these 3d because this is like a 3d scene or whatever so make these 3d including the text message and then we're gonna change the rotation on the little circles this could be anything but i'm just gonna like rotate them any type of way and they should all be different now that we change the rotation we're gonna change the position move the 3d positioning around so press p move the position forward or backwards it should be really random after that what we're gonna do is add our final no layer of this video make this 3d connect everything to the no layer except for the solid and then once you rotate it it should move like this and yeah i hope you like get where i'm going with this but basically this is going to you know rotate i'm gonna move the rotation like this a little bit and i'm gonna press r and then i'm just gonna do y rotation and maybe x rotation you can also do scale go forward a few frames move this towards the middle then you're going to change the y rotation and it should be like a higher number change the scale to zero it should move in like this and then we're just going to move this more and then after that we're going to go past these keyframes go towards the end and then we're going to make it rotate back out so make it an even higher number it should be like 350 and then we're going to change the scale back to zero and then once you play this back it should do something like this but then we have to do a graph change the graph for this and then we're going to do a graph like this and then once you play it back it should do something like that and then we're all done guys i really hope you enjoyed this week's video i love you guys so much i'm sorry i was gone for so long but i should be posting consistently stay safe thank you guys for watching i love you and i'll see you in the next video bye <laughs>